players. The offense may look a little bit similar, but defense is going to be some serious change that's going on. But you still have Tommy DeVito taking the snaps, a really good quarterback in the ACC. So we'll see how he can handle what will be a similar offense, but still making this big of an adjustment with two new quarter uh, coordinators has got to be a difficult situation with a short time to work with. I've heard it described as moving around the furniture on offense, whereas you're doing a total remodel of the kitchen on defense. So completely new look for Syracuse on the defensive side. Well, we'll see how that uh, defense looks under Tony White. A 3-3-5 look, a little bit different as Taylor Davis is down the sidelines. Well, guys, we are finally here. It's taken a lot to get us here, but season is underway. Now, most recent news coming out of the ACC today is that Virginia, Virginia Tech, the game slated to take place next week, has been postponed due to coronavirus concerns. Obviously, the football world has had a prominent impact due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, guys, both of these teams here today will be without notable players. For UNC, three defensive players, DJ Ford, Bryce Watts, and Javon Terry. For Syracuse, running backs, Abdul Adams and Jarvion Howard. Game day also looks different, as you can tell. No fans, extended team boxes on the sidelines, social distancing, and everyone has been tested multiple times this week. Guys, it's different, but between the lines, the game is the same. Well, it will be the same quarterback that lit up defenses throughout the country a year ago as Sam Howell will be will be under center after what was a record setting season in 2019 an offense that is just littered with talented skill players Howell will throw on first down and the pass is caught Daz Newsom makes that first grab out over the 40 to the 42 but as far as Sam Howell goes, this is a comment from his coach, Matt Brown. He's just got it all. Never seen a more accurate thrower than Colt McCoy. I'm seeing those same things out of Sam. Boy, that is a big statement. And the thing that I loved about him in his freshman year was his poise. From the first snap to the last whistle, the guy wanted the ball in crunch time. He was the leader of this offense. Michael Carter in at running back on a second down and relatively short. Howell. He will be hit and dropped back at the 32-yard line. So the first negative play because Josh Black, 85, gets in there and the first sack of 2020. The Syracuse defense is talented in a number of areas. We'll talk about the secondary at some point, but Josh Black and this defensive line are really, really good creating the sack on second down. So a loss of 10. Ball will sit up at about the 35 now as Howell throws, passes caught, but a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Yami Brown making the catch inside Orange Territory. See if that will stick. It looks like Syracuse Offside. might have jumped. Defense, that penalty is declined. Results of the play, first down. North Carolina will take the yardage and move it to the 43. Here get a shot of the new defensive coordinator for Syracuse, Tony White, instituting this 3-3-5 defense that Rocky Long has made famous out at San Diego State. He comes over, and it's a completely new look for Syracuse. Someone first down and 10. Howell gets it to Michael Carter. Breaks a tackle inside the 30 to the 20. Down the sidelines and pushed out of bounds. They will spot him around the two-yard line. Andre Sisco pushes him out of bounds, but it will be first and goal, North Carolina, but a flag back at the end of the play. Get a look at how close it was. This one was going to come back due to a hold. It's a really nice job of Michael Carter. Tiptoe on the sideline, does step out. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because it's going to come back. Kingsley Jonathan's just standing right on top of the flag. He knew that was coming back. So wave off the big run. And that'll set the football back in North Carolina territory around the 47-yard line. Well, we were wondering just how this game would be played. You know, the other night, Miami looked pretty clean on Thursday night in their opener, but there have been a lot of miscues as teams try to get comfortable. The thing we have to remember is that it's still a first game, and you're going to get some of those, some of that sloppiness early on. Monte Williams, he'll fake it to him and throw. Good pressure on Howell again by Syracuse. Kingsley Jonathan getting there. 
One of the hallmarks of this 3-3-5 defense is that it's going to be incredibly multiple. It's not often going to present itself in a clean picture. And, and Syracuse is going to bring pressure from all over the place. We're really going to see that from both defenses. But early on, they've been able to create a little bit of a inconvenience for Sam Howell in this game. Carolina's gone three steps forward, two steps back yeah. as they sit around the 47 right now on a second down. The line to gain is all the way down to the 33 of Syracuse. Howell spins out of trouble again. Has to throw off the back foot, falling away, and that one is knocked away at the last moment, looking for Brown. Elefonwu there to make the play for Syracuse. Well, again, a little bit of pressure created on the edge. Sam Howell scrambles out. And this is a great recovery by Ifatu Melifanwu, who's one of the most underrated corners in the entire ACC. He's long, he's physical, and he does a great job of closing on Diami Brown, breaking up the pass to create a third and long. He had eight PBUs last year. Andre Sisco gets most of the attention in that secondary, but Melifanwu certainly can hold his own with anybody. So now it's third down and 20. Pressure. Howell stands in the pocket, throws to the wide side of the field, pass is caught by Chopri Brown, but that is well shy of the line to gain. It'll be fourth down and about seven yards for North Carolina. Let's see what Matt Brown wants to do here on a kind of in that no man's land territory. It's a little outside of that field goal range. I'd expect him to go for it. But Chopri Brown, number one, the brother of Diami Brown, gets the start opposite Diami because Bo Corrales has been a little banged up, so expect to see a lot of the Brown brothers today. Howell stays on the field. North Carolina going to try to go for this. They need to get it inside the 33. Howell stands in the pocket again. Pass is caught. Newsom down to the 22-yard line. That'll be a Carolina first down. Garrett Williams with the tackle. Syracuse opts to bring pressure. Look at North Carolina picking it up. Love that from Javante Williams. And Daz Newsom gets man-to-man -man coverage against the great Andre Sisco. Is able to win that battle. Sam Howell finds him. Handoff off the right side goes to Williams. 933 yards on the ground last year for Williams. Carter with over 1,000. This is one of the best running back groups in the ACC. Clemson gets all the attention because of Travis Etienne, but Williams and Carter can do it all. There's Williams trying to get the edge. He'll be brought down by Aaron Coley. Coley on the tackle. Howell, four out of six for 60 yards to get this one started on this opening drive for the Tar Heels. Michael Carter back in the game at running back. Free play for North Carolina as flags come down to the end zone, overthrowing the Army Brown. On the play. It's the second time we've seen Syracuse jump, and, and you have to think that not only is Offside. it pregame jitters. Defense. Number 30. Five yard penalty, resulted a penalty. First down. But Carolina goes with that clap for their cadence so with no fans in the First stands with no ambient noise Syracuse can hear every time Sam Howell claps his hands so you have to ask does that play into it a little bit or is it just not paying attention to the fundamentals which is looking at the football and not the quarterback the ball will sit around the 11 yard line for Sam Howell who stands again in the pocket throws underneath Garrett Walsh in the tight end Touchdown, North Carolina. And it did not take long for Sam Howell to post his first touchdown pass of 2020. And maybe the least likely candidate of the guys that started. We talk so much about Deami Brown, Daz Newsom, and Bo Corrales. You talk about the running backs, but this guy, Garrett Walson, often does the dirty work in the run game. They get him on a little crossing route. He gets into the end zone. Good for 84. Mac Brown said to us that Garrett Walson is going to be a big factor in this offense. So Grayson Atkins, the graduate transfer from Furman to attempt this point after, and he will split the uprights, the FCS All-American a year ago. So North Carolina, this high-powered offense off to a good start. They lead it 7-0. Sam Howell doing what he did last year. He's throwing touchdown passes.
I'm Hector. I am at 20. Syracuse now to get the ball. Jonathan Kim to kick it away. And out to the little scuffle going on right around the 30 yard line. But no flags, and we'll play some ball. And that means that we'll get a chance to see Syracuse redshirt junior quarterback Tommy Tavito, who last year part of this team that was expected to produce a few more wins they had just five but Tommy says there are no expectations this year except for them to lose the only people that know what we have is us and I love the last line in there beware of the quiet man well it's a completely different feel coming into this season than what you got a year ago when Syracuse was coming off that 10 win season so Tommy DeVito and this crew are going to look to rebound Jordan on that first carry for Syracuse. No gain, and you see this Carolina defense fired up. They waited a good bit to get on the field, finally get there and make a play to start this drive. DeVito, by the way, last year, pretty good numbers. 19 touchdowns, just five interceptions. From the near hash. Spot that before he went out of bounds, right around the 30-yard line, pushed out of bounds there by Storm Duck. Syracuse quickly in third down. This is going to be huge because they've got a former tight end, Chris Elmore, starting on the offensive line due to some injuries and attrition. Outside slant is caught out over the 35. That'll be marked at the 36, so a first down for the Orange. Anthony Quilly making the catch on the outside, and here goes Syracuse. You want fast, you got fast with the Orange. Give them a first down, and they're going to go. A little misread there on the outside as Taj Harris broke his route off. Taj Harris looks to be the guy to fill the void of Tristan Jackson leaving, and all, all Syracuse really does is print 1,000-yard receivers, it seems like, every year. Taj Harris looks to be that next guy, but not on the same page with Tommy DeVito on that one. Swing it near side. Mikey Johnson hit around the 33-yard line. That'll be a loss. Don Chapman coming up, making the play for the Tar Heels. Carolina did a fantastic job of staying disciplined on this one. Don Chapman not fooled by the run action going the opposite way. And open field tackling is always a big question in the in the early season. Chapman doing a nice job there. Loss of three. And another third down. Third down and 13. Bobble snap. DeVito coming near sidelines and just off the fingertips of Taj Harris. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Looked like DeVito actually had Taj Harris down the sideline, who beat Storm Duck, a fantastic sophomore cornerback, but the throw just a little bit off. They're going to give the ball back to North Carolina. Nolan Cooney will punt it away. Syracuse was great in the punt department last year. Opponents just averaged 1.7 yards per return. Their longest allowed was just five yards. Daz Newsom back to return this one. He will call for the fair catch around the 24-yard line. Well, you saw that graphic earlier about Sam Howell's ability to complete passes deep, and this is an example of the ability that the freshman had in the bowl game. He makes a 45-yard throw on a dime to the back pylon. Look, those Temple defenders have no shot to Daz Newsom, but when you look at where he can get better, it's in the run game. He dropped about 10 pounds, and they really unleashed him in the bowl game. You see a zone read does a good job of pulling the ball, and during the regular season may not have, he may have thrown this, may not have run it, but in the bowl game and what we expect him to do this year is stuff like this where he tucks the ball takes off gains 26. So he gave up that fast boot yeah. in the offseason. Hard to do during the quarantine. But he said he dropped what, 10 pounds. Yeah th so so it's funny when we talked to him he said he dropped about 10 pounds of bad weight by not eating Chick-fil-A which gave <laughs> you and I live in Atlanta we know how hard that is to cut out Chick-fil-A out of the diet. Second down, well, another 
quick throw. That'll bounce off the hands of Brown. But again, Dave, talking about the, the running ability of Sam Howell, when, if you were to add that part to his game, it, it just takes it to the next level. When you talk about the top quarterbacks that have been drafted recently, think of Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, all have a running aspect to their game. So it is something that the modern quarterback needs, and Sam Howell was certainly aware of that part of it. He said he studied every game of Joe Burrow last year. That ball is picked off at the 33-yard line. Jones comes up with the football, and Syracuse is in great field position. Mikel Jones, the sophomore out of Miami, with the first turnover of the game. That play, Mikel Jones is going to get the, the, the stat line. He's going to get the interception. But that play was made by Melifonwu. Again, one-on-one -on -one with Deami Brown on a slant is draped all over him. Sam Howell has confidence in his receiver, but Melifonwu with those long arms at 6'2", sticks it in there, knocks the ball up in the air. Syracuse comes over with a big turnover. This has been a Syracuse defense that has been fantastic at creating turnovers the last two seasons. It was a third-team freshman All-American a year ago out of the IMG Academy. Gerard Jordan in it running back alongside DeVito. He'll get the handoff and he has stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Storm Duck crashing in from his corner spot to make that play. Storm Duck on the tackle for the targets. This is two straight series where Syracuse has gone to an early run with no success. Putting them at second and ten, although this is you, you gotta think against a team like North Carolina, even now you're thinking four down territory no matter what because field goals aren't going to cut it against this group. Five wide receiver look, so an empty set for DeVito. Three to the wide side. Two to the near side. Four-man rush from North Carolina. Pass a little bit behind Harris, and that's incomplete. Chaz Surratt, the outstanding linebacker for North Carolina, a little banged up on that one. Oh, boy, Chaz Surratt who's on everybody's watch list as a defensive player, the former quarterback who put together an All-American season last year. A great story. Let's hope he's okay. And here's a look at that last play as we head to break. Back in a moment. At Food Lion, our savings mean more for your family. Our everyday low prices on the things you need most mean more full bellies. Our weekly sales on everyone's favorites mean more to share. And our rewards on... CC Network Football is brought to you by Marathon. Fuel it. ACC Network Football is brought to you by Marathon. Chase, Chaz Surratt looks like he's going to be okay. Got to the sidelines, and medical personnel just kind of left him alone, so hopefully he'll be back on the field shortly. But a big third down coming up here for Syracuse. 7.41 to go in the opening quarter. 7-0 North Carolina. Pressure comes. DeVito steps away from it. Finds a little room to run and gets it close to the line to gain. Tyrone Hopper finally drags him down, but I think he might have enough for the first down. It's just a fantastic job of Tommy DeVito. Tamon Fox gets turned loose off the edge, and he steps up in the pocket, something that he struggled with last year. Steps up, takes off upfield, and gets really close to the first down marker. Looks like they're going to mark him just short. Fourth down and less than a yard. About the length of a football. DeVito takes it himself, and he is stopped short of the line to gain. Damon Fox comes up and makes the play Syracuse for North Carolina. Really a nice play by this North Carolina defense on the zone read. Tamon Fox is able to get out and recover. It's a decent read by Tommy DeVito. Fox was kind of playing in between. In that situation, you'd like to see him hand the ball off. But you've got to pick one. He does. Tamon Fox recovers. Fox makes the big fourth down stop. 
for the Tar Heels will get the football back at the 23 yard line. The last drive stopped by an interception on a tipped ball over the middle. Michael Carter in at running back. Two receivers to the near side. Hand it off to Carter. Nowhere to run. Not even Michael lost Carter to have for the Tar Heels. First one there was Thompson. But hanging out around there was Andre Cisco. He's playing that rover position, which is the prime position in that in this 3-3-5 defense. We're going to see him all over the field. Go with Carter again. He'll fall forward out to the 24. That'll be a, a three-yard pickup there. So now it's third down. And let's call it nine. Drill Williams there to make the play. A talented player in that Syracuse secondary. And on these third and fourth downs, Syracuse has liked to go with man coverage. And North Carolina's been able to beat it a couple times. Now that you've got him in third and long, imagine Tony White's going to play a little bit more conservative. We'll see if he heats up the pocket. He dumps it off underneath. Both Corrales making that catch. Garrett Williams will push him out of bounds, but that'll bring up a fourth down. Well, Tony White didn't bring more than four, but he did decide to go man to man, and it just shows the confidence that he has with this secondary. There were a lot of crossing routes, a lot of trash that those guys had to fight through, but Syracuse was able to do it and stop him on third down. Ben Kiernan to punt it away, the sophomore out of Dublin, Ireland. over 41 yards a punt a year ago. Good hang time. Deep kick. That will send Johnson back to field this one, and now he's got room to run. Flags all over the field. There are multiple flags a fantastic return you're going to get an illegal blindside block against Syracuse and to be quite honest Dave it was a block that didn't need to be made Johnson was going to During be the return personal foul illegal blindside block number 88 receiving teams 15 yard penalty from the spot of the spot of the foul first down boy tough break for Syracuse they could have put some points on the board they will have the football when we come back whenever this happens is Nikeem Johnson is going to beat the punter in a foot race. You have to not make that block and rely on your returner to make the specialist miss. Yeah, that was, that was six on the board. That has uh, now Jordan been taken to off. Jawar Jordan tries to pick up a few yards on that first down carry. He'll get it to the 30-yard line, a gain of two. Again, going with Jordan. This time off the right side. He's to the 35 and stuffed right there. Zach Gill, the first one there for the Tar Heels. You know, this running game for Syracuse took a real blow as Abdul Adams and Jarvion Howard, two guys that were counted on to be their one and two running backs, have been, uh, the official statement from the school is, just unavailable for this game. But there have been multiple stories out there that they have, quote, opted out of this season. And that, in terms of a run game, they were relying on those guys who had some experience in the ACC. And now you're going with guys that, you know, haven't exactly carried a whole. Five-yard penalty. Still, third down. That haven't exactly carried the football very much. And, Dave, I think it'll be even more prevalent in situations like this, third and long. I mean, Jay Bateman loves to heat up the pocket with blitzes, and it's going to put stress on the running backs. So how do Jawar Jordan, who's in right now, and Mackenzie Pierre, who we'll see at some point today, how do they do in pass protection as well is going to be just as big as how they do running the football, minus those two guys and Mo Neal, their leading rusher from a year ago. Yeah, Mo Neal was 846 yards on the ground, averaged 70 yards a game. Five-man rush, pocket collapses. DeVito goes down at the 25. First one there is Fox. We talked about the Brown brothers. Well, there's also the Fox brothers as well. You're going to see Tamari Fox just work his way through the middle of that defense, excuse me, that offensive line. 
close in on Tommy DeVito, and there's nothing DeVito can do but go down for the sack. Well, he got used to that last year. He was sacked more than any other Power 5 quarterback 44 times last year. And, and Dave, how, how big does that illegal blindside block oh, become? Gosh. And you go from a touchdown to a three and out against an offense that is one of the most dynamic in the league. Nolan Cooney to punt it away to Daz Newsom. Daz calls for a fair catch, and he will field it at the 35. So Sam Howell back on the field for more on his story. Let's go down and check in with Taylor Davis. Guys, every time Sam Howell has left the field so far today, he is going straight to offensive coordinator Phil Longo, trying to break down the Syracuse defense. I talked to Sam this week, and he told me preparing for this game has been difficult. He said, I've watched film on both Syracuse personnel as well as this Tony White 335 defense. He did not know what to expect. They said so much of today would be about in-game adjustments. He and Coach Longo talking extensively about that before this drive. Well, I mean, it's hard to say that a true sophomore quarterback is experienced, but, I mean, he saw a bunch last year, and Phil Longo talked about how he has really become one of those quarterbacks that sees things so well, studies the tape, and they have, like, as he kind of said, paraphrasing, adult conversations about coverages. Couple missed tackles as Williams gets it out over the 40. Spot him at the 42. And that's got to be invaluable as a coordinator, right? To be able to sit there with a young, he's still a young quarterback, but have these conversations that you, you, you think you're going to have as a senior. Yeah, and, and Phil Longo told us he's working on coverages it, that are NFL coverages with Sam Howell. A lot of it this offseason happened over Zoom, but that's something that he typically does going into a quarterback's junior year. He's able to have those conversations with Howell a year early. It shows you the maturity and the intelligence of this guy. Pick up a four there will bring up second down and six. 23 to go here in the opening quarter. Howell throws a bullet over the middle. That one is dropped right around the 43-yard line by Bo Corrales. He's getting a lot of snaps today. We weren't sure how much we would see him. They said he was banged up. It's going to be a game-time decision. We well, see the press coverage by Garrett Williams, who's draped all over. We've seen if Fatu Melifon would do this, too, on the back of the receiver. Good job not committing the interference with the offhand, breaking up the pass. Tony White has challenged his defensive back so far in this game. Pass caught underneath. Nice little dipsy do move on the outside by Bo Corrales, which will gain the first down into Syracuse territory around the 47 yard line. Well, the dipsy do started with the route. You get a slant return. He catches the ball, goes around one defender up the field, gets a jump, and the first down. That's the whole bag of tricks right there. Looks healthy to me. Yeah. Here's Williams off that right side. He's powering his way. Inside the 40, another first down as he picks up about 12 yards. This dude's one of my absolute favorite running backs to watch in the ACC, and it's because of what he does after first contact. He's got enough speed to run away from people, but consistently makes the first man miss. This time, not much happening there as Devontae Williams decides he's had enough. He'll take a little breather. Here comes Michael Carter. What a duo. What I mean, if you're an offensive coordinator, you got these two guys that can just alternate every snap, stay fresh. Here's Carter. Swing it to him. He gets hit around the 30. And when, when you talk Javante Williams and Michael Carter, you have to talk yards after contact. When you look at returning players from the ACC, Travis Etienne, JV, and Hawkins, obviously fantastic, but two guys from UNC on that list. And when you go on a per carry basis, it move those, moves those guys up even higher. They are both fantastic in different ways. Williams a little more powerful. Carter will shake you, bake you, and then go to the house. Yeah, I mean, Williams last year broke 56 tackles on his 166 carries. That's a staggering number. Here's a third down. Powell throws. Batted in the air. Flag comes out as a helmet fell to the turf. Thompson's helmet came off. As that pass falls incomplete. 
You can Canton two freshmen R2. on the left side. It looks like that's a hand to the face or a face mask. That you, you, you can't rip the guy's helmet off of his head. It's tough on those offensive linemen, though. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Offense, number 74. 15-yard penalty. Replay. Third down. The defenders whose helmet came off may remain. Jordan Tucker, the guilty party there. And Jordan Tucker, six foot six. Stephon Thompson, the freshman, six foot, six foot even. So it's tough. Those big offensive linemen got to get their hands down when you get against those pass rushers that are a little bit, uh, a little bit shorter. Well, this makes it a long third down. North Carolina, two out of five on third downs here in the opening quarter as we come down to the final seconds. Four man look for Syracuse up front. Carter goes in motion. They'll swing it out to him. Syracuse plays it well, and they'll drop him around the 33-yard line. See if that is the final play of this first quarter. Looks like it is going to be. Mac Brown was sending his field goal team out, but this is kind of a weird no-man's land. See the confidence that Mac has in his field goal kicker. Sam Howell had 38 touchdown passes last year against seven interceptions. Well, he has one of each here in the opening 15 minutes from Keith. North Carolina able to grab a All-American from the FCS level to come in and kick graduate transfer Grayson Atkins, who was stellar at Furman, 13 of 15 last year. And you saw the numbers there. And He's won the job here in the preseason, and he will attempt this one from 50 yards away. Near hash mark, good clean snap. Kick is on the way, and it hits the upright. Had plenty of leg, just couldn't split the uprights. And Syracuse stands tall and gets the football back again. Syracuse defense getting the stop on third down. Grayson Atkins has been fantastic. Just hooks it a little too much, and then the dreaded doink at the end. You hate the doink. Well, nobody here to boo or cheer that missed field goal as it is an empty Keenan Stadium. It's kind of surreal. They do have some cutouts, which we have shown you, but, boy, it's got to be different to play in this environment. It, it certainly is. You really have to bring your own energy during these games. And it was different for us, Dave. I mean, there was no traffic getting to the stadium. There's nobody in the parking lot. You walk onto the concourse, and all of the concession stands have drapes over them. It was kind of surreal. It felt like yesterday when we showed up just to go through our walkthrough. DeVito, nice throw to the wide side of the field. That pass is caught. Good enough first down. Taj Harris. But, yeah, it is certainly a, a different and unique situation. For more, let's go down to Taylor. You're absolutely right about that, guys. Being down here on the sideline, it is different. There's no way around it. And both of the teams told me it would be noticeable because they're used to feeding off the crowd's energy. What I am noticing, the energy levels on the sidelines, guys. It's very different. They're going to have to dig deeper as the game progresses. DeVito throws that away. And that's something that Matt Brown said. He says, hey, got telling this team, guys, you got to bring your own energy today. It's so important for those guys that are not on the two deep, not in the, the 44 guys that are going to play. If they're on the sideline, it's your job to bring that energy, to bring the excitement on the sideline so that if you make a big play, it feels like a big play. And if you're a little down, your sideline doesn't suffer the consequences of it. Well, North Carolina and some other schools in the state went to the governor's office to try to get them to make a special provision to allow fans in attendance but this week found out that that wasn't going to be the case some schools certainly around the country are allowing a percentage of fans in as the pass goes deep off the helmet of Taj Harris incomplete and there are no flags Storm Duck back there running stride for stride we've seen great cornerback play by both sides of Fatou Melifonu on one side but Storm Duck here on the shot it's so easy for you to panic and grab the receiver do something to commit pass interference duck maintains his composure and knocks the ball down and, and you got a name like storm duck i mean that's first team all acc name team right there i mean that is it is the hall of fame right there storm duck devito he's dropped inside the 35 
Boy, the front four of North Carolina just caved in the pocket. When you get in these third and long situations, North Carolina is going to bring pressure, and it was really up the middle. You get big number 51, Raymond Vahasek, collapsing the pocket, and there's nothing a quarterback can do. I mean, think about the great offensive lines. They're strong up the middle, but when you collapse the middle of that pocket, there's nothing Tommy DeVito could do but go down for the sack. 6'3", 295, bringing down DeVito. Daz Newsom back to return this punt. He'll stand around the 25-yard line. Cooney with no rush. Wobbly kick. Taken at the 21 and dropped there in Syracuse. Trying to dive on the football. Who has it? It will be Syracuse football. Daz Newsom usually sure-handed. That one gets down, and the turf is slick because it's been misting a little bit at times. You've had some precipitation. The ball squirts around. Syracuse ends up falling on it, and Syracuse has to take advantage of this. I mean, they've had the interception. They've had the punt return called back. Now they get another break inside Carolina territory. You have to take advantage of it if you're the Orange here. Boy, big fumble recovery. Aaron Belinsky, a long snapper, comes up with that football. Let's see if Syracuse can do something with this. They've been given a couple of gifts in great territory. Let's see if they can make North Carolina pay. Dewar Jordan. One of the big questions coming into this game for this Carolina defense is how do you replace Aaron Crawford and Jason Strobridge? And Jay Bateman told us, you don't have a guy like Strobridge. Those guys just don't walk off the bus. But he felt really confident with the interior of his defensive line, and they've been impressive so far. Boy, a little delayed reaction by everybody at the line of scrimmage as DeVito, a little quarterback draw, takes it close to the 10-yard line. Miles Wolfolk will bring him down. Boy, I just saw in the previous play, bad news for Syracuse. Aaron Service, 37 career starts, hobbled off their left tackle. This is a huge play for Syracuse. Make sure they give him the conversion so it's first down. Yeah, they spotted that. Might have, it looked like he was a little bit shy of the line to game, but he got the first down. So Syracuse will keep this one going. Gerard Johnson making the grab for the orange. This is an offense for Syracuse that last year scored 28 points a game. And, and down in the red zone, here's where they like to use the tight ends a lot. Aaron Hackett on the right side of this formation. Oh, wide open in the corner, but cannot connect. They were trying to hit Johnson. That's intended for Johnson. Incomplete. Boy, they had six on the board. Got lined up against the nickel. Trey Morrison in the slot does a fantastic job. He's just leaving Morrison in the dust, but can't connect. Oh, Ball goes man. right between his arms. Again, over and over. We saw a deep ball earlier. We saw the punt return, the, the interception. Syracuse has not taken advantage of the opportunities that they've had because they've been there. And this becomes a massive play. You got to get a touchdown here. They'll hand it off. That will go to Jordan and really no room to run on third down. So now you're looking at fourth down. And they needed to get to the two yard line for the conversion. And now Dino Babers will send out his field goal unit. Sterling Gilbert and Dino Babers deciding to go conservative with that play call. Likely worried about that offensive line. But field goals are obvious. They're not going to beat North Carolina with field goals. So at some point, when you get some of these breaks, you're going to have to punch it in the end zone. Well, they've got an exceptional field goal kicker. And Andre Schmidt, the redshirt junior. Former walk-on. Missing somebody on the field goal team. And we got six of the offensive linemen on missing. It's like one of the ends or one of the tackles is going to cost them the timeout. Remember, Aaron Service had to leave the game because of an injury. Don't know that he's back on the field. 
Maybe he is back out there. And these are things that you yeah. typically see in first games. And uh, one of the things that Mac Brown has said constantly over the course of this this run lead up to this game is with the expanded sidelines, it's been tough to communicate. That's the thing that a lot of coaches have said over the course of, of learning in the first couple of games. It's harder to communicate and get your special teams on the field. So from the near hash, Andre Smith's 47 of 54 in his career. From 37 yards out. And the orange on the board. Probably wanted more, but they'll take the three here in the second quarter back to Keenan Stadium at Chapel Hill after this. Roy Williams, an interested observer here at Keenan Stadium today. One of the few observers inside Keenan Stadium today. You gotta be a VIP to get this ticket. Yes, you do. Roy Williams certainly qualifies. This is now officially the hardest ticket in the history of North Carolina <laughs> sports history. On the return, Michael Carter, flags come out. And he doesn't even get to the 15-yard line. Back up. During the return, legal block in the back. Receiving team, number seven. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So North Carolina will be backed up just outside the five-yard line for this drive. Sam Howell. 11 of 16, 104 yards, a touchdown and a pick, but he's thrown to six different receivers so yes, far. And this, this Carolina offense really doesn't have a, a good rhythm right now. You saw it on the first drive. They were able to get some things going, but Tony White on defense for Syracuse has done a pretty decent job of at least having North Carolina stall out. They've moved the ball decently a couple of times, but the interception and a couple of mistakes have really Hurt this North Carolina from hitting on all cylinders. North Carolina with 135 yards of offense. Syracuse just 27 yards today. Nothing on that run game as Javante Williams is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Boy, the front for Syracuse. And throw in a, an aggressive Syracuse. rover or a corner. And they've been very uh, efficient up front in the run game. Well, Tony White told us that he loved his front. Josh Black, McKinley Williams, and that one, it was Kingsley Jonathan, the first guy in the backfield. Those three guys are all experienced, they're all big, and they really fit the three, the front three of this 3-3-5. Three, three, Quick slant, Corrales tries to hurdle a defender, will have the catch in the first down. They'll spot him at the 25-yard line. We got two backs in the backfield, and Sam Howell just waits for Corrales to clear that first window and hits Corrales. He's really liked going to Corrales over going to the other side where Diami Brown is matched up with Ifatu Melifonu. Howell on one of those designed QB runs, and nothing there. Yeah, and unless this was a designed pull, this was actually a good read by Sam Howell. Kingsley Jonathan is the read player on that. You just had a stunt where the tackle is looping to the outside. So that's just a, a, a play call where Sam Howell does everything right. Syracuse just had a better defense call. We talked about Sam Howell a little bit in the run game last year. They told him to quit running. They just didn't have any depth in the quarterback room and forced him to just hit the deck just about every time he was in trouble. But now they said, hey, run with it if you feel like you got it. Trying to swing it out to Carter. That'll be incomplete. Another third and long for North Carolina. And third downs have been a struggle today. Syracuse one for six, North Carolina two for six. Tony White on this defensive side has done a good job. Phil Longo is going to try and find something. But Syracuse has done a pretty good job of at least pushing the pocket, creating some uncomfort, some discomfort in the backfield for Sam Howell. Four man rush pocket collapses forcing Howell to run he's to the 30 and tries to get that football over the 35 yard line Jones will push him out of bounds they spot him at the 33 and, and again the pressure of Syracuse makes this play 
the job that they do, because he had Daz Newsome open over the middle of the field pretty quickly, but because you got pressure off the edge, he had to step up and then got flushed. So Syracuse's ability to confuse this Carolina offensive line once again comes to fruition. Yeah, this Syracuse defense has done all that Dino Babers would want, this high-powered North Carolina offense, a little bit sluggish here in the first quarter and a half. Nikeem Johnson out over the 20 to the 22. So Tommy DeVito, the redshirt junior quarterback, trying to get this offense cranked up. The vacation that Mac Brown has had with them has been really impressive, and, and this is a, an impressive group of guys and an impressive program. You know what I love about this, too, is, as you said, it's, there's ownership in that, but that's a great-looking design with an important message. I mean, it all works together, and Matt Brown yesterday in our meetings, just the passion that he has for this and for change and for being on the... and understanding his players and giving his players an opportunity to to talk and and describe it's just it's incredible what Mac Brown has done I mean the passion that I saw was just uh, was, was was awesome I think Mac Brown has something through has had something through all of this that all of us could really learn from and that's empathy he has had a tremendous amount of empathy for for his players for his black coaches and has really done a great job of listening to them through all of this pass caught by Johnson and that'll take it out over the 30 for more on what North Carolina is doing in that patch let's go down to Taylor yeah guys I spoke with Tavon Fox about the patch this week he's a very talented artist and he said this is the most important project he's ever done he said this shows that our team has come together and we're fighting for something that's bigger than football I agree with both of you I've been so impressed with these players feeling the responsibility to use the platform that college football has given them to fight for lasting change. Yeah, it's just uh, Matt Brown has, has, has met this head on. And, and, you know, Dino Babers is in a, in a unique situation too, Roddy, as an African-American coach. There aren't many of them, right? And I think a lot of people look to him. And some guys run from that kind of pressure and scrutiny, but he's a guy that wants to step up, be a voice, because I think a lot of people look at him, hey, man, he's a head coach at an FBS school in the ACC. And, and I asked him about that. That responsibility is the only black head coach in the ACC. So did he feel a responsibility to say something? So the pass got out of bounds on third downs. And he really said, yes, he, he, yeah. he absolutely did. And, and I think that it was so important for Dino to do that because as a black man through all of this, I was looking to Dino Babers to see what he was going to say and the stance that he was going to take. And uh, I think he has spoken really, really well uh, about all of this and, and how much it means to him. And, and honestly, how he feels a sense of responsibility because his generation has left a lot for the younger generation to clean up, as he, as he says. Well, his offense... All right now we'll have to punt it away again. Daz Newsom back to return. Cooney, another good high kick. Newsom will field this one. And Newsom will get it out to just shy of the 25 yard line. No flags on the play. But Tamon Fox. Designing the patch that will be seen by a lot oh, over the next few months. Hey. Marathon Conference kickoff. Keenan Stadium here in Chapel Hill where Syracuse's defense has done a nice job. Tony White, first year defensive coordinator, was calling plays for Arizona State in their bowl game last year. Got this job and brought the 3-3-5, which is really kind of kept North Carolina in check to this point and that to me would be the biggest storyline with all the weapons that North Carolina has offensively. Yeah the, the Syracuse defensive front has done a good job of creating pressure on Sam Howell when he's challenged the secondary to cover these defensive these wide receivers man to man. They've done a fantastic job as well. Second down and medium they'll hand it off to Carter trying to find a little bit of room. But Tony White said that he wants a lot of movement, a lot of aggression Kingsley, Jonathan on, the tackle. No on this defense from Queens, New York. Part of the reason he Third came back. It absolutely is. And, and 
when we asked him about coming back, he said, I, I had a great job at Arizona State, made the decision to come to Syracuse, and he was incredibly glad that he did because his mother still lives in New York. He, she actually was diagnosed with COVID-19. He was able to get her into a hospital, and he feels like his move largely helped save her life. And she's doing well now, thankfully. There's Carter. Boy, he just got tripped up by Canton Arku, or that could have been a big gainer and a first down for North Carolina. Well, when you go man-to-man, -man, it means one of the, your Eight linebackers are matched down. up against one of these outstanding running backs from UNC. Oh. And if not for a shoestring tackle, Michael Carter's off to the races. First down at 10 from the 35. Five on the line for Syracuse. Carter coming near side, little stutter step, cuts it back to midfield and then some to the 45 of Syracuse. That is a big gainer brought down there by Coley. And that'll be another Tar Heel first down after the 22-yard pickup. A little bit of a hold there on the edge, maybe, yes. but a nice cut by Michael Carter to get up the field. Well, when Syracuse goes back and watches the film on that one, they're going to be a little upset. Injury timeout on the field. Can't, Canton Arku, the one down. Back twisting and turning goes Joffrey Brown, the redshirt freshman from Charlotte. Joffrey Brown, Diami's brother, was a little banged up last year, but Sam Howell said he's one of the most improved guys. Did a really nice job of working back to the football on that one, giving Sam Howell somewhere to go with the football. Second down, Howell will hand it off. That one goes to Javante Williams. Run game hasn't been as productive as maybe we might have anticipated coming into this. They had a, a run a few plays ago, picked up 20 yards. Prior to that, they were just 12 carries for 40 yards. Yeah, it, it has not been consistent. They've hit a couple of big ones, but Syracuse has largely done a pretty good job up front. Here's a big third down play right here. Syracuse up front getting the work done. Steve Litt blowing through the line and destroying that play. So Tony White called him ultra explosive, the true freshman, and looks like Carolina. Now they're sitting on the punt team, but watch him. This is a blown assignment on the offensive line. Somebody is supposed to account for him. Linton just comes right through and makes the big stop on third down. And if he doesn't make that tackle that far behind the play, Carolina's got a fourth and short where they probably go for it. But fourth and five, Mac Brown opts to send the punt unit out well, because his defense is playing so well. Again, you know, not a whole bunch of practice time, and you get all this movement from Syracuse in a new look defense. It's caused some problems up front for North Carolina. A pooch punt taken by Johnson around the 10 yard line. So Syracuse. With the football, 2.50 to go here before halftime. Well, Miami got off to a good start, took down UAB on Thursday night, looked pretty good doing that. But, boy, I'm anxious to see Notre Dame. A full league schedule, playing for a championship, first time in school history. That'll be a fun one to watch beginning at 2.30. And then, of course, I think, you know, obviously the biggest game of the day for you and I is there at 3.30, Georgia Tech and Florida State. Good luck. Uh, good luck to you, too, sir. <laughs> Georgia Tech seems like they've, they've got something in their pockets, in their back pocket for, uh, for Florida State with the quarterback back position who's going to start it's a big question mark but uh, on your Notre Dame point I'm pumped to see Notre Dame in the league this year I'm also pumped that they figured out that the logo goes inside the numbers and not outside <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Georgia Tech second year under Jeff Collins of course Mike Norvell leading Florida State's team as he takes over third head coach for Florida State in four years James Blackman will get the start for FSU this afternoon boy wide throw unique play call well they had the receiver way back off to the right near the numbers as Jackson makes the catch you have Jawar Jordan lined up like 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage but what it allows him to do is catch this ball going towards the line of scrimmage with the head of steam so essentially it ends up as like a long handoff it's a really cool play design and then here goes Harris he'll pick up some first down yards near the 45 yard line that was a little Canadian football wasn't it? It, it was and, and as long as Jordan takes off after the snap he's completely fine to do that but it, it allows you in a situation where you don't typically them to have that four-man rush DeVito going up top has a man can they connect no 
Boy, Queeley was there. He had gotten past his defender by a couple of steps, but DeVito just overthrew him. Patrice Rene was back there in coverage. I mean, how many times have we seen that? We saw it with Nikeem Johnson down on the goal line. We saw it with Taj Harris down the sidelines. Syracuse not able to complete yeah. these, these long passes down the field. And that's a couple of touchdowns that Syracuse should have had through the pass game, as well as the punt return. Oh, the punt, the punt return the board, is the one so. that's just going to, if you're a Syracuse fan, that one's going to stick with you for a while. Opportunities, yeah. It's all the numbers on DeVito, 10 of 18. They'll go on the ground here with two minutes to play. Jamari Fox bringing down Jordan. That play was made by Ray Vahasek, though. I mean, Raymond Vahasek, number 51, has just done an incredible job of being disruptive. He lines up over the center, Carlos Vettorello, pretty consistently. He's come out of the game now, but he has been the best player on this defensive front for North Carolina. So now it's third down and nine. Pressure comes. DeVito feels it. Breaks a tackle. Dives for the 45, and he'll have the first down. Jazz Surratt, who we haven't mentioned his name much today, makes the tackle. But that'll be first down. And once again, you get DeVito moving up in the pocket, which he struggled with last year, but it gives you the opportunity to get north and get yardage. DeVito has one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far side. This time the pass is caught, but it's out of bounds. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Taj Harris, who made the grab, but had a foot out of bounds. That time they hit it, and Storm Duck does a good job of riding the receiver towards the sideline. And that first foot comes oh, in oh. Right, right on the line. So they finally connect. But if you're the receiver, Taj Harris, you got to lean more into the, into the field of play so that you have an opportunity to get that foot in bounds. Second down for DeVito and company. That one is dropped. Had man coverage again on the outside. They are just wearing out Taj Harris. He is running sprint after sprint. He is going to try to catch his breath. Remember the conditioning aspect of both of these teams and really all in college football with no real summer workouts. The Syracuse receivers are always asked to run a lot, but Tommy DeVito opted to go with a different trajectory on that one through a little bit of a bullet, put it right in Taj Harris's hands, but not able to bring it in. And Dino Babers wants a timeout with 109 left in the half. Boy, both coaches talking about conditioning and the unknown. You know, it's funny, when we, when we talked to the coaches this week, Mac Brown did talk about the conditioning and how they're going to have to roll in so many players. And when we went to Dino Babers and asked him, where are you the most behind, coach? He said, look, this, this, doing this is like putting a toddler. I've got two toddlers. He said, Rod, it's like putting your toddlers on a bike with no training wheels. You just don't know how it's going to go, but he's got to be pleased with his defense for sure. Syracuse, uh, when the schedules were reorganized, they found out they were coming down here to North Carolina, not exactly the easiest opener for the Orange, and they're going to have to uh, get it together next week as well because they got to go on the road again to Pittsburgh before they get to go home and play three straight games beginning with Georgia Tech but I mean as far as schedule goes Syracuse kind of got the short end of what it could have been there's a few schools that got a, a short end of the stick Syracuse is one yeah. of them then this road schedule for the for the Orange at North Carolina at Pitt at Clemson at Louisville at Notre Dame so if you're looking at the preseason <laughs> yeah. standings you're talking about what four of the top five yes on the road that's brutal. Timeout taken by North Carolina. This drive has picked up 45 yards for Syracuse. They had 50 yards of offense coming into this drive. So Mac Brown on the other side, they might have one, right? When you start thinking about schedules a little bit, they get to open up here at home against Syracuse, and they have another home game, a home game next week as Charlotte comes to town. And then they go on the road at Boston College. But uh, versus what they had in front of them, this is a little bit different. It certainly is. Uh, when you get 10 conference games, you are one of the fortunate ones if you don't see the two behemoths, Clemson and Notre Dame, and North Carolina doesn't. But when you talk about getting a schedule that 
that obviously avoids those two, but also avoids some of the other top teams. Pitt falls off their schedule. Yes. That's a fantastic defense. Uh, Mac Brown has to be happy with it. And I think it's a lot of the reason that people are saying North Carolina could be a sleeper to end up in the championship game. Well, they had U UCF at the top. Then that yeah, then and week, in week two was Auburn. <laughs> dropped around midfield. Tamari Fox, first one there for the Tar Heels. That is a, you see the holding signal on Syracuse, which will be declined. Holding. Offense, number 87. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. You know, that, that's going to go down as a sack, obviously, but that's not an offensive line sack right there. That is a coverage sack. North Carolina dropped eight on that one, and the Hassock once again in the backfield, but it was really the, the coverage of the secondary that gave Tommy DeVito nowhere to go with the ball that created the sack. So a minute three left. North Carolina still has two timeouts remaining. with the officials on the sideline not exactly sure what he's trying to clarify but he was trying to clarify whether or not the uh, clock was going to be running if it was going to start on the snap well Groves back there to return this punt after Daz Newsom got most of the work on punt returns put one on the turf Recovered by Syracuse. He'll stand at the 10 yard line. And a flag comes in. They ran into the punter, Nolan Cooney, and a flag comes out. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense, number 88, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, that changes things a little bit. It's another gift from North Carolina to Syracuse. It's been constant over the course of this game. It seems like the first half, and you've got no shot at blocking that. You shouldn't even be out of control there, being that far away from the punter. And you, when you run into that point leg like that, take out the kicker, you're going to get the 15-yard variety. And Syracuse, once again, in a situation where they have to take advantage before the half. They get the ball to start the second half as well, Dave. So if they're able to score here, they can do the old New England Patriots double up at the beginning of the second half. Well, for North Carolina, that's five penalties for 56 yards. That's on top of the interception and the drop punt. Right. A lot to talk about for Mac Brown at halftime. Syracuse, though, a couple of timeouts themselves, 56 seconds on the clock. 7-3 ball game and a whistle blows and a timeout taken by Syracuse boy now where you want to burn a timeout certainly not but with the play clock running down and guys running all over the place you kind of had to do it well every Saturday morning the huddle with Jordan Cornette Eric McLean EJ Manuel and Mark Rick get you ready for ACC football they'll preview the slate of games keep you updated on all things ACC football next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on the ACC network and of course always on the ESPN app total yards 89 for Syracuse North Carolina sits at 200. North Carolina defense has just done a, a really good job of making it difficult on Syracuse. Syracuse only averaging 2.5 yards per play. As you mentioned the yardage there. It's It's been tough sledding. But Syracuse has had opportunities. I mean, they've had shots down the field that they haven't been able to complete. It would be a big swing in this ball game if they're able to get one here. Well, Syracuse now down to one timeout. Ball sits at the 36. DeVito, empty set. Quick hitter over the middle as he hits Taj Harris, who breaks a tackle, stays on his feet, breaks another tackle. He's inside the 20. They couldn't wrap him up. What a run by Harris. 
Taz Harris is only listed at 164 pounds, but we've seen him do this time and time again. Somehow just manages to break tackles. The whirling dervish is able to get a guy off of him on his shoulder. And the biggest part of that, he's able to get out of bounds. 21 yard pickup. Looked like maybe a three or four yard gain. First down and 10 inside the 15. DeVito to the right. Will throw it away. Well, the two linebackers, Jeremiah Gimmel and Chaz Surratt from North Carolina, came in just maybe two of the best in this league. We haven't really mentioned their names at all. Today. We haven't, but because this game is largely going to be played on the perimeter, and the front has been so dominant that they haven't had the opportunity to make that many plays but you see the stats for Surratt I mean this is a guy that with a good season can be a first day pick in the NFL draft a first rounder uh, mainly because he can really run and that's what NFL teams are looking for DeVito keeps it he'll get it inside the 10 mark him around the eight and a half Hopper making the play for North Carolina clock moving at 28-27. Syracuse with that one timeout. Well, I like the, the play call to go with the run play. You're going to make sure that no matter what happens, you get the last shot in this half. So Syracuse is going to have an opportunity that even if they kick a field goal, North Carolina is not going to be left with very much time. North Carolina takes the timeout. 13 plays on this drive. fast is get first downs yeah. and they haven't been able to do that so uh, it has messed with the rhythm of this offense a little bit uh, the other thing that we have not seen that we saw some at the end of last year is the tight ends get involved Aaron Hackett down near the goal line is always a big weapon they've gone with a five receiver set here so no tight end on the field but Carolina Syracuse is going to get try and get a matchup with one of these linebackers on a receiver. You see Taj Harris in the slot at the bottom against Jeremiah Gimmel. DeVito rolls to his right. Nowhere to go, and he is hit out of bounds around the 11-yard line. Chaz Surratt chases him there. And now it's fourth down, and Dino Babers thinking about what to do here. Syracuse now just two of ten on third downs, and here comes the field goal unit. And you have you have to get the field goal. Here. You you have to do it as much as you would like to get seven to change the the tenor of the locker room when you go in. You have to take the points, and ultimately, uh, when you have someone who's been as consistent as Andre Schmidt, you go ahead and take it. The 2018 Lou Groza Award winner and first team All-American from the far hash. And he misses it. Oh my goodness. That is an unexpected outcome to say the least. Schmidt is trying to say that he was interfered with run into a pretty good acting job right there. You've seen some of that in the bubble as well, in the NBA bubble. And honestly, though, if, if he does if he does not bring the leg back in, if he leaves the leg out and you actually get contact on it, then, then you may get that call. But when you bring it in and, and then take the dive, you're not going to do it. Boy, one of the most consistent kickers in America misfires on a little chip shot. And flags come out, and there will be a stoppage before we get to the locker room. 
Flags on the play. Illegal snap. Offense, Offense on the center. center. Five-yard Five penalty. penalty. Replay the down. Just to tell you how surprising that missed field goal was, Schmidt was 34 of 35 inside 40 yards in his career. He missed from 29. That's incredible. It's been that kind of first half for Syracuse on the offensive side of the ball, though. So there is the knee. Both teams to the That's locker rooms. A little bit sloppy. Carolina scored on their opening drive, but nothing after that. Syracuse defense played extremely well. They need a little help on the offensive side. When we come back, we'll get you to the studio. Your drive. Your passions. Venture through a curated collection of astonishing items at touchofmodern.com. Because sometimes things aren't just things. They're you. Go to touchofmodern.com and discover the world's most unexpected items. Welcome into the ACC Network Halftime Show. I'm Jordan Cornett, your host, Coach Mark Rick. Joins me, Syracuse, trailing in this one, but it's a close game. North Carolina leading 7-3 at the end of the first half there in Chapel Hill. Coach, was this what you expected? I think we got Coach coming in. Hey, there he is remotely from his home there down in the south there in Florida. Coach, 7-3 to three first half. It was not pretty. Your biggest takeaway? Well, to start the game, North Carolina had a beautiful drive, got, got their third down conversions when they didn't get a third down conversion. They got a fourth down conversion, threw a, got a touchdown pass to the tight end. They looked great. And then from then, they've been shut down. The cornerbacks uh, from Syracuse have done a wonderful job. But Syracuse should have at least, at least 21 points, if not more. You know, there's a muff kick, a muff punt they don't score. Throw a touch, there's a, a pass that should be a caught for a touchdown, he drops it. Um, just unbelievable uh, the opportunities that, Clint, that Syracuse has had. They had the punt return for a touchdown. Somebody makes a foolish block on the punter. I mean, just some foolish mistakes that really should never have happened. And they should be up at least you know, 14, 17 points right now. Coach, in a sloppy first stanza, has there been anybody or any area of the game that has impressed you most thus far? Well, again, what's impressed me is the cornerbacks from, from Syracuse. I think it's Williams and uh, Melifusa, uh, guys that are just lock, locking down, playing man-to-man -man coverage uh, on these great receivers, allowing the rest of the defense to bring certain pressures and and, uh, you know, put, put pressure on the quarterback, make him move out of the pocket, make him throw under duress. Uh, just very impressive what Syracuse has done on defense to this point, and it doesn't look like they're slowing down anytime soon. Time now for today's AFLAC trivia question. And we will stick with Mr. Cisco. He's been a preseason AP All-American the last two seasons. Who was the last Syracuse defensive player to receive preseason AP All-American honors? This was tough. We were kind of going back and forth with this in the break, and, and I thought it had to be Chandler Jones, although I don't know if he would have gotten the preseason hype. Right. I, oh, let's what? go! Yeah, you did. I, 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 I will admit it. I was thinking Dwight Freeney or something, but you came with Jones, and you win. Well, that's, I feel like that was the equivalent yeah. of a... Uh, uh, of just saying one dollar in prices, right? <laughs> Going with the most recent yeah, one. Right. It was really good on that side of the ball. Uh, Michael Carter making the catch. We didn't know. We didn't have any idea, but uh, well done. Uh, well done, uh, Roddy. So, again, it was the one dollar in. <laughs> but I, I, think, I think this is a big drive for, for North Carolina. I mean, coming off the interception, you really had a disjointed first half. It's you, There were so many expectations with this offense. Their response is, is going to be fascinating on this drive. A bunch of white jerseys, orange helmets at that line of scrimmage, and all moving around. North Carolina picks it up. Quick slant. Bill Corrales making the catch for a first down. One of the things I have really liked with this Syracuse defense is Tony White has said, hey, DBs, we don't care how good these guys are in the preseason. We're going to challenge them. Bill Corrales makes a nice play there. Michael Carter on that carry. You know, we were talking at halftime about Howell's numbers, and you look at them, and yeah, they, they look great, but there's not that splash that we were seeing last year from this offense. 
Syracuse has made him work. Yeah. I mean, they have made him work down the field only two plays over 20 yards in that first half after having 90 a year ago during the year. That ball is batted straight down to the turf, incomplete there. And that'll bring up third down. Jonathan and Linton, both those guys back there in the backfield in a hurry. You just feel like Tony White is just doing such a good job of his play calling with his ability to, to have movement on the front. And even if they're not creating pressure, they're doing things like that, getting in the pass lanes if they can do it on third down. Devontae Williams in at running back. They'll give that batted pass to Kingsley Jonathan up front. I'll get him a little start on the uh, on the boards in the football office next week. They'll swing it out to Williams. Makes a man miss. Another one miss. And tossed out of bounds inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line. Garrett Walston with a nice block on the edge. This play is made by Garrett Walston. A really nice job of cutting Andre Cisco. Who just made a fantastic play. If not for that, Javante Williams is going to have Cisco one on one, but because of that block by Walston, it springs him. Big hit on Howell, gets the pass away down to the 25 yard line, caught there by Deami Brown, but Howell took a shot. If it wasn't for that pressure, Howell has a little bit more time and finds Daz Newsom, who was wide open between the numbers and the hash marks. So Syracuse once again, even though it's a positive play for North Carolina, that pressure eliminates a touchdown. First down and 10 inside the 25. Here it goes Michael Carter. This offense starting to click now a little bit. Seems like they found a rhythm. Yep. It certainly does. And that, that's what first downs do for you. When you go to your playmakers, they're able to do exactly that, make some plays, get your offense in that rhythm where they're lathered up and ready to go. They'll split Carter outside, and now they'll send him back. Talking to Phil Longo about this, this 20 personnel, two backs, no tight ends. Both Carter and Williams are so good in the pass game that they really still have the entire playbook open. Yeah, combined to make 38 receptions last year. Big collision. Javante Williams lowers his head, and he'll have the first down. He's five foot ten, 220 pounds coming in the hole, and man, better him than me on that one. That's why I played offense. Man. I did not, want, did not want to be on the receiving end of that, like Jeff Canton our coup was. Fresh set of downs now for the Tar Heels. one-on-one -on -one to the top Let's see if they go there looking that way to the end zone and Corrales tries to make the circus catch but it's incomplete Neil Nunn on the coverage they love this one-on-one -on -one jump balls to Corrales down near the end zone it's a really nice job by Nunn of ushering Corrales to the sideline the throws may be a little long Still a nice play by the Syracuse secondary because Carolina's going to challenge you if you give them one-on-one. -on -one. Tenth play of this drive. Howell. Pocket collapses. Breaks free. He will scramble inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line. Pushed out of bounds there by Eric Coley. So now it'll be third down, but an injured orange player. Coming up, and Thompson will have to watch this one. Third down, and let's call it six and a half as the ball sits just inside the 10-yard line. They need to get it inside or close to the three. Devontae Williams at running back. This is, a, this is a big play here. Usually, you look for your slot guy. Daz Newsome is to your top of your screen. Looking that way, but Howell is dropped by Kingsley Jonathan. Straight shot right to Howell. This is a little bit of a, of a weird play because 
Powell look, pulls this ball and is looking for somewhere to throw, but I'm not sure Corrales or, or Newsom were expecting that. Although Walson was leaking out, maybe he was trying to go there. Walson tripped a little bit coming out, but a big stop by the Syracuse defense. I mean, they have been so good consistently making this Carolina offense stall out and forcing either punts or field goal attempts. Grayson Atkins from 31 yards out. Bar hash mark. Cooper Graham, CC football from Keenan Stadium here in Chapel Hill. Been a little misty on and off today. Not exactly what we expected. Thought we'd see some points on the board. Much more than this. The Dino Babers offense and a Phil Longo offense <laughs> right. combined for 16 points. Let's go, Wolf! Let's go, Wolf! Well, Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation to bring college football together to support and celebrate the teachers across the country. And thanks to the CFP, ESPN is honored to donate $20,000 this week to help support teachers and their students. And listen, I've got a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old in high school, and watching the teachers in our community prepare for a virtual classroom, and now kids are going back to the classroom. It may not last. They may go back to... I just want to say, as a, as a, as a parent how much I appreciate the effort of teachers around, not just in my community, but around the country. You're the backbone of this country, and the effort you have done throughout this pandemic is mind-blowing. So thank you all. You said it, Dave. I mean, I don't know that, that many people have been challenged as, as much as teachers have been throughout this, and they just show up and continue to do their job, whether it's virtually or in person. So find you a teacher today and hug them. <laughs> Tell them thank you. Or, Fist pump. Fist pump. Yes, I'm sorry. Hey, sorry, right. I forgot. Fist pump. Don't hug yeah. him. Just say thank you from afar. Uh, hard to believe this is what we're talking about. <laughs> but we are. The Syracuse offense had a nice drive here in the uh, beginning of the third quarter. Looked like they found a little rhythm and stumbled inside the red zone. And now they're looking at a third down and seven coming up. They have not had a whole bunch of success on third down conversions today. Just three of 13. Matter of fact, neither team really has. Matt Brown telling us yesterday that was one of his focal points in the offseason was try to figure out how to be better in third down and short yardage situations. But Carolina's just coming off a 12-play drive. Syracuse cannot afford to put its defense back on the field quickly. Surratt was picked up on his blitz attempt. Now he's chasing down. Ball's incomplete. Jeremiah Gimmel making a play for the Tar Heels as well. DeVito, boy, sacked 44 times last year. He's been hit quite a bit today again. And not, you know, as we talked about, not all those sacks are on an O-line. Some of those are on him. Yeah, some of those are on, on the secondary. I mean, right. th there are some coverage sacks in there. He also ran out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage ones, which counts as a sack. Uh, my former broadcast partner, Eric Wood, would just go crazy as a former offensive lineman when that's counted as a sack, because that's not on the old line. Daz Newsom will field it and run, but a flag comes down. Daz Newsom gets past the punter. Daz Newsom will take it to the end zone, but there is a flag down around the 33-yard line. That could be for, did he call a fair catch or was there a block, a legal block? Tony Grimes, the five-star recruit from Virginia Beach, Virginia, just with that little nudge in the back that throws off the gunner. Daz Newsom comes back. And, and I, I will say, though, Dave, uh, we've seen a couple of punt returns where touchdowns called back. Uh, on that punt return, that is that is where I missed the crowd to yeah. the most today. Because when you get an exciting play like a punt return, you always feel the roar of the crowd, whether or not yeah. there's laundry on the field. That's the first time I've really noticed that, uh, that we are doing this with nobody in the stands. Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, looking at this offense. That went 65 yards, actually more than that. They had so many penalties in that first drive, but still got the touchdown. The next eight drives, 141 yards and three turnovers. First down and 10, Howell 
And that shotgun formation, quick hitter over the middle, pass is caught around the 37 yard line by Choffrey Brown. Josh Downs, the true freshman that they're so high on. I tell you what, Neil Nunn, the defensive back, I think it was Choffrey Brown on his behind fending off this block. You got to come stronger than that big fella. Yeah. You got to bring that 175 pounds to work. Downs a four-star, top 100 player out of Swanee, Georgia. Big hole off the left side. Michael Carter to the 20 and pushed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. A big run for the Tar Heels off the left side. It's a really excellent play design. You had number 88, Kamari Morales, going across the formation. The running back goes back to the side where Morales came from, and it was a wide-open hole. Nice play design by Phil Longo. 45-yard pickup. Second read works for Howell as he gets it to De'Ami Brown, who sets up North Carolina now first and goal from the three. Again, North Carolina just came off a 12-play drive, a three and out by the Syracuse offense, put the defense right back on the field. Carolina picks, off, picks up where they left off. The question is, can they get it in the end zone this time after stalling out on the last drive and settling for a field goal? North Carolina's offense last year in the red zone, 89% success rate. Third in the ACC, 30th in the country. They'll go with a couple of tight ends, Morales and Walston. Javante Williams at running back. Inside handoff, and let's see if Williams got in. They're going to say he's shy by about a half a yard. Spot on the shore. We're going to get a, another look at it just to see if he it is indeed the case. That's a pretty good call by the referees. And that should be the end of the third quarter. North Carolina knocking on the door, trying to stretch out this four point lead. Second down and goal for the Tar Heels. They are knocking on the door inches away. Handoff goes to Javante Williams, who will stick his nose into the Tar Heel end zone for the six. Carolina went with a big package there. They brought in an extra offensive lineman, a couple tight ends. They go under center, which they don't do often, unless it's time to just power into the end zone and. Monte Williams is really able to just walk into the end zone. It's the first touchdown North Carolina sports. It's the first series of the game. So this high powered offense finally finds pay dirt again. Grayson Atkins to attempt this point after and he will split the uprights. Seventeen six. Well, North Carolina finally bringing some energy. It's been kind of flat. You might expect that with an empty stadium and everything that's going on. But these guys were getting after it. Well, they, they just kept the fourth quarter tradition. Usually they go down to the student yeah. section, which is right there, to get them hyped up, get them excited over the between quarters when they hold up their fours. This time they just went down there and had a party themselves. They didn't invite us, though. Yeah, no. They did invite Taylor, though. Taylor. <laughs> What's it like down there? I should have joined them, guys. Yeah. It's been really interesting to watch all day. I think the up and down play we've seen on the field has kind of been paralleled with the up and down energy on these sidelines. For UNC, coaches have been encouraging players, hey, jump around, yell from the sideline, encourage your guys, which they'll do, but then they fall back down. It's tough to keep yourself at a consistent energy level. It's going to be something all of these teams have to deal with this season. Yeah, bring your own energy. That's what Mac Brown has said time and time again as North Carolina brought the energy on that drive. Six plays, 77 yards. Powell was 7 of 10, 80 yards on that drive. 
You know, North Carolina expectations, man, they are big around here. Not just around here, but around the country. Mac Brown has brought the attention back to Chapel Hill on the gridiron, and they're expected to finish third in the league behind Clemson and Notre Dame. And you see Louisville has made a substantial jump under Satterfield last year, turned that program around. Virginia Tech, when are they going to be able to get on the field is another question. They have had some coronavirus issues there. Um, obviously, Clemson and Notre Dame. How far away is North Carolina from that group? Well, I, I think I think they still have to prove it on the field. Uh, that that is going to be the big question. From from what we've seen today, uh, I think I would say it's a significant distance. I mean, they're going to have to be much more consistent on the offensive side of the football. And complete on the far side, trying to hit Taj Harris. Miles Wolfolk on that coverage. Yeah, I think you know we they're still you know. 1451 to go in this and North Carolina could strike quickly with the weapons they have on offense but I think they're going to walk out of here and, and there will be some more questions about how good they really are because I think expectations are so high well, I, I think that, that you see Tamon Fox again getting in the backfield a fantastic sack the seventh sack of the day this defense has been able to come up with it's coming off the left side Little stunt comes in, and this that is where Marquinzi Pierre misses that block. He's obviously one of the two running backs filling in for Abdul Adams and Jarvion Howard. But uh, th that is that is the first time we've really seen the breakdown in, in pass protection. Well, we'll see if Mac Brown and, and, and you know this uh, the greatest improvements we say it all the time week one to week two. Syracuse. Trying to put some board, uh, points on the board is DeVito scrambling his way out to the 28 yard line. He needed to get it to the 35. He'll be helped up by his offensive line, and here comes the orange punt team onto the field. Dave, I think the point that you just made about improvements from week one to week two, that is the case every season, but I think it's even more important this season. I mean, these guys have not played real football you didn't have a spring game where you typically go live you had varying levels of spring practice so this opportunity to get out and have those live bullets you're going to learn a lot about your team no matter how you feel about the performances today the, the teams both of these teams are going to get a lot better over the course of the year Daz Newsom will feel this at the 15 Trying to find a little bit of room and does so. Nice return by Daz out to the 30 yard line, 31 yard line. The punter Cooney pushes him out of bounds. So it is a surreal feeling here at Keenan Stadium. Four o'clock. It's Austin P taking on Pittsburgh from Heinz Field. And then primetime game, Western Kentucky and Louisville. That should be a good one. Two teams, just huge improvements last year. ACC primetime presented by Geico Louisville just to see how Scott Satterfield in year two plays now they'll have 12,000 fans at Cardinal Stadium for this one and Western All Kentucky side. defense number zero five yard penalty still first down Western Kentucky nine and four last year Louisville won eight and five cards averaged over 33 points a game 440 yards of offense. I'm excited to see how far that defense has come. First time in a lot of these guys' careers that they're going to have the same coordinator in back-to-back -back seasons on the defense side of the football for Louisville. They will get it to Michael Carter. Makes a nice catch, and he will get it close to midfield and have the first down. Syracuse defense has been out there quite a bit. They have held up pretty well against this North Carolina offense today that last year averaged over 33 points a game. 474 yards of offense. Oh, nice little pump fake, but nowhere to go for it. Howell has some room to run now. And here come a bunch of flags. There are multiple flags on the Mikel Jones. Personal and he knows foul. it. Unnecessary roughness, late hit on a sliding quarterback. Number 13, defense. 15 yard penalty added on to the end of the run. First down. And Mikel Jones pointed to his head. He knows that he's got to be smarter than that. 
The other part of this is he's fortunate that he doesn't get it a little higher. Ooh. Oh, I they did not call targeting on that, but that's that is going to be reviewed because that's yeah. a targeting penalty. And Mikel Jones is going to be out of his game. Wow, what are you thinking, Mikel? You, you, you can't do that. That is a, a an up top attack. It was decided that this is not targeting, but uh, this checks all the boxes for me. It is a, it, there, there is a, a lowering of the head, a leading with the forearm. This is a defenseless player, attack to the head and neck area. I'm not sure how this did not get called, but Mikel Jones is fortunate that it didn't. Yeah, that is uh, a, a shocking result. Good for Mikhail, and we're lucky that Sam Howe, just shy. They will spot this, it appears, around the one yard line. Check out this play by Michael Carter. It was sloppy, but then this move. Oop, oop, oh, going in. I'm going out. So shifty in the open field. He has really been the biggest weapon for this UNC offense, and he's so dangerous, both in the run game and the pass game. We've seen him on little bubble screens. We've seen him on that one, which is a traditional screen. We've seen him in the run game. Uh, Michael Carter is one of the most dynamic players in the league, and he's one of the most guys. You see, he was trying to reenact the... Uh, the, the juke move right there, which was awesome. He's one of the most dynamic guys in the ACC. Javante Williams in it running back. Oh, boy. First down. Oh, boy. Five-yarder when you're at the one. Luongo's got to feel pretty good about the rhythm that his offense has gotten into the last three drives. It started with that 12-play drive that ended in a field goal, but since then, whether it's the wearing down of the Syracuse defense or North Carolina just starting to execute, they have really performed well the last couple of drives and looked like the team that we expected coming into this game. They will hand it off to Javante Williams. Touchdown, North Carolina. You know, the depth is always a question in these games, especially on the defensive front. And this defensive front has played really well when you're having to rotate and play as many plays as the Syracuse defense has the last few drives. It ends up in open holes. Javante Williams gashes him for a touchdown. Grayson Adkins the point after less than two minutes on that drive 68 yards on four plays and Carolina now puts some points on the board they lead it 24 to 6 here in the fourth quarter defense it's hard to find some of that rhythm that Phil Longo loves to play with you see the length of those drives this is a team that's closing in on 400 yards of offense Syracuse has had their opportunities today to put some points on the board, but they have sputtered when they've had those opportunities, and consistency is, is a word you wouldn't necessarily use with them right now. Yeah, well, they, the thing with Syracuse on offense is they had opportunities early. Yeah. And when you have opportunities in a game where you're a 20-whatever point underdog, You've got to take those you got to take those chances and convert on them and, and Syracuse just wasn't able to do them and here in the second half they've really been limited to to really not much they haven't consistently gotten a run game going and when you've had chances it's really been Tommy DeVito scrambling that's been your best offense yeah it's been their best play without a doubt he may have to do it here if he can't get the football away he does just throw it away had nowhere to run Sterling Gilbert comes in as the new OC, the former OC with Charlie Strong in Texas and South Florida. He obviously, he has some time with Dino Babers in Eastern Illinois and Ball State. Knows this type of offense very well, so they're on the same page. They just got to find some way to make some big plays. Yeah, the, it, it's been a, it's been a mixture of things. North Carolina early came up and played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Syracuse took some shots deep. Incomplete. DeVito couldn't get his feet set looking for Johnson. And that's kind of another example. I mean, Nikeem Johnson had a window there, but Tommy DeVito's got to drive that ball to get it to him before the safety. 
And it takes, it's a tough throw, but it's one that a four-star guy like Tommy DeVito is brought to Syracuse to make. Yeah. And, and we just, we just have not seen that comfort there. It looks, you know, a lot like last year where the offensive line struggled a lot and DeVito wasn't able to get a rhythm. Dumps it off underneath, not nearly enough for the first down. Pick up five, and DeVito in the second half now two out of nine for 21 yards. And not all of that is on him missing throws. Some of it's on the receivers not being able to get open. I think North Carolina's done a really good job in those situations, which has allowed the pass rush to get there. But it's kind of been a mixture, a mixed bag of when you're able to get guys open, you're not able to protect. When you're able to protect, you're not able to get guys open. It's a really nice job of Jay Bateman mix, mixing things up and making it uncomfortable for Tommy DeVito. As Newsom back to return this punt. He will field it at the 17. Boy, nice little move there. Sees a seam on the near side. Daz Newsom. He's to midfield. Boy, Daz has shown some nifty return ability today. You know, Dave, as many times as you go live in the preseason, the thing that you do the least is go live on special teams and cover and have to tackle in space. And both of these teams have struggled with it at times. We've seen some big returns, but Gaz Newsom is one of the most dangerous returners in the conference and shows you why. The nifty moves, the speed. He had the drop there early, but has since atoned for it. 34-yard return after the 52-yard punt. Gaz put one on the turf earlier, but he has made amends for that in a big way. Short field now for the Tar Heels. Devontae Williams, headed running back. Sam Howell, 24 33, 257. Steps up in the pocket, and throws to a wide open receiver. Yami Brown, and he'll drive a couple of orange defenders inside the 10, down to around the 7. Man, I love that play from Sam Howell. It was two over routes crossing the field. So it's a long developing play. He steps up in the pocket, keeps his eyes down the field, delivers a strike to Deami Brown. And that is why fans should be excited about Sam Howell. Just the poise in the pocket as well as the arm talent to get the ball there. 37 yard pickup makes it first down and goal just outside the five. They will go with Williams. Left side breaks a tackle into the end zone. And now North Carolina starting to open this one up. Third touchdown of the day for Javante Williams. I just feel like the Syracuse defense is worn out. It seems like they've been on the field the entire second half. The offense has given them three three and outs. So it's really been up to this defense. and. North Carolina has taken advantage of it. Here's the play by Howell to set that up. Steps up in the pocket, rolls a little bit to his right, and the pass is a little behind Brown, but it's a fantastic play by the sophomore. Going after is good. Howell now 25 of 34, 295, a touchdown, does have a couple of interceptions, and it's now 31 to 6 with 937 to go with this one. And fourth quarters. Have been good to North Carolina under Mac Brown. Going back to last year, they were among the best in the country in fourth quarter scoring margin, third in the FBS at plus 69. And today they are already plus 21. I think Mac Brown would tell you that uh, this is great, but that plus 69 should lead you to uh, more blowouts than yeah. one score games that they had a year ago. So we'd like to do that in the first three, but. but the ability to close games, or at least if you're behind, to come back and make them close, that's why it's what had a lot of people excited about this North Carolina team. I think we've seen it today. I mean, in the second half, Sam Howell seemed to find a little bit more of a rhythm, and really it was the offense as a whole. They cut down on the sacks. And there was a little bit better rhythm getting the running backs the ball, especially Michael Carter. So it's been really impressive to see late in the second half how this offense with so many expectations has responded. You mentioned those close wins. Nine of 13 games last year decided by a touchdown or less. Most of any team, if you go all the way back to 1936. 
Be sure to get the latest news and information from the ACC each and every morning with special guests from around the world of sports. It's Packer and Durham weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern right here on the ACC Network. And, of course, you can always find it on the ESPN app. And I know those two guys are probably as happy as anybody that they can talk about some real football stuff on Monday. I'm excited to see some of the stuff they've got rolling out. Uh, an old segment with a new name, yeah. WRU, some of the best catches. <laughs> right. Of this of the weekend and uh, the always always fun accounting apparently is coming up on Tuesday so I've heard so I'll wait for my invite to Pac-Man's basement <laughs> I got that invite one time yeah, so yeah, I, I mean, it's, yeah. it's impressive although social distancing in the basement <laughs> it can be tough, tough right a little tough second down coming up for the orange hand it off to Marquinzi Pierre for Syracuse now, I think this offense just needs a little, a little bit to build on. You have to have a little momentum. You're certainly not completely out of this game, but it starts here. I mean, either way, you want to have something good to put on tape at the end of the game. They've really had a tough go of it on third downs. And here's another one. A tough go of it for DeVito as he has dropped that'll go down as a sack or a rush he's close to the line of scrimmage but well, I don't know what the decision is going to be for Dino Babers to go for it or not but Tommy DeVito just showed some of the hesitation that we saw last year he had Nikeem Johnson yeah. open in the slot but you've got to make that decision right away and gun it in there sides to hesitate and creates a, a situation where he's got to tuck it down and, and not do anything but Decision making has to be a little bit quicker for DeVito because he had a man open. Another chance for us to get a look at Daz Newsom returning these punts. He has been spectacular back there. 37 yard return just a moment ago. See what he does here. Has a chance to field it at the 15. And he'll get it out over the 30 to the 32. That could be a real weapon for North Carolina as this season unfolds. Back to Chapel Hill. Kansas will get his first work. Jay 6'2, 225. And he will keep it and try to work the near side. Sam Howell's day today. Uh, you know, how would you assess it? Uh, it certainly wasn't wasn't stellar. I think the two interceptions uh, were, were certainly not how he thought this was gonna go. And and both of those were tight windows that he tried to force it into, but this offense is, is was looking to get into a rhythm and work out the rust, and I think the way he responded in the second half was great. Phil Longo did a good job of giving him some some throws uh, that were easy, but he executed too. So I, I think I would give him a pretty good mark on, on his performances there. Josh Henderson on that carry, but here's what it looked like for Sam Howell in the second half. Yeah, it was really about him settling down and completing some balls early. I think that was one of the big things. He steps up in the pocket here and takes off and runs. And that was one of the things that we were looking for. He's did not done that successfully. This is a nice pass to De'Ami Brown that he's able to complete, but he's hit Michael Carter a few times. He's had some easy crossing throws. Not as many of the deep balls as we saw early against this really talented Syracuse secondary. He's many more crossers, many much more stuff underneath that let his guys run. We'll get that to Henderson, and he stumbles as he approaches the 40. They'll actually mark him back around the 37-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down. Josh Henderson, a sophomore out of Pennington, New Jersey. 18 carries a year ago in eight games played, getting some work today. Hard to find time with Carter and Williams. Matter of fact, you mentioned Carter. He had six pass catches out of the backfield today. They're having 21 a year ago, and, and that's the thing with this Carolina offense. I mean, clearly they were a little disjointed early, but you just keep going and to find the weapon that's going to work for you that day. And today, it certainly was Michael Carter. Favorable Tar Heel roll here. That will be down to around the 17-yard line. But Sam Howell's season last year was just incredible with those 
38 touchdowns, an NCAA record for true freshman quarterbacks. And you look at the ACC historical perspective, and only two guys threw more touchdown passes in a single season, and those guys were okay at that position. So, so on the earlier list, on the list we had earlier this year, he was on the list with two guys that just got two-thirds of a billion yeah. dollars of contracts <laughs> in the NFL. Yeah. Now he's on the list with a Heisman Trophy winner and a two-time Heisman Trophy yeah. finalist. Yeah. Certainly good company he's finding himself in. Oh, my gosh. Taylor has more. You know, guys, this week, head coach Mac Brown addressed the media, and he was asked about the challenges that 2020 is bringing him. He said, look, I knew what coming back here Jordan meant. It meant a rebuild for this program. But even with 2020, we are ahead of where I thought we would be in the rebuild process, and that is all because of Sam Powell. Guys, he completely credited the quarterback for where this program is headed. He wasn't perfect today, but this is a guy who wants to be great. He has high expectations of himself, and they are building this program around him. And, and Dave, let's not forget that when Mac Brown got this job, Sam Howell was committed to Florida State. Right. That was his first big recruiting win, and it's only continued. Uh, but his conversion of Sam Howell, getting him to believe in this program and in the vision that he had in this program was a program changer. penalty from the previous five automatic first down well I, it's amazing what Matt Brown has done and how he has connected with the young people in the recruiting circles and getting guys like Sam Howell to make the commitment to come here not knowing really how this would turn out right but you see what he's been able to do in the recruiting world and you know what he's sticking mostly to this to this area right here into the great state of North Carolina for a lot of these kids in North Carolina has always had good football, but the explosion of the Charlotte area has made it one of the top producing states in the country when it comes to recruits. 20 players in the ESPN 300, and half of those are committed to North Carolina, and they're still in play for a few more. And look, so. there's some kids from Syracuse yeah, yeah, exactly. that are from this area, exactly. in the Charlotte area. Nice catch on the near side by Queeley, and he is out of bounds. Actually, they're going to spot him out of bounds at the 49 of the orange. Rex Culpepper, by the way, in at quarterback. Fifth-year senior out of Tampa. How about that flow, man? Look at the good hair. Stuff. That is good stuff That's right good there. My 14-year-old will be jealous of that. His mama won't let him do it, though. Unless until I push that to the side. It's not my decision. <laughs> I bet you had some lettuce back in the day. Oh, I did, buddy. I oh, had the yeah. wing haircut going. I had the gold chain around the <laughs> neck, man. Go. Come on, you're talking about the late 80s down in Tallahassee, Florida? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get a look at Rex Goldpepper. Smart guy, obviously, and, and he's a guy that three-time ACC honor roll. Second down. And with Tommy DeVito's day and, and, and really the struggles that this offense has had, it makes sense to get Culpepper some reps. And you're, because of all the things that, that are going on this season, injuries obviously, but also the possibility that you have to have Rex Culpepper start a game for you. It's good for Dino Babers to get him in and get some reps so that at least you, you have some semblance of what it's like to play in a football game. And there's an opportunity for a lot of guys who have worked hard over the last six weeks to get some some action. North Carolina's practice schedule has been interrupted a few times. Matter of fact, just not long ago, they had to shut it down for five days because of an outbreak on campus. Not necessarily for the football team, but just the campus shut it down. And you start, you stop, you don't get any rhythm in practice. Hard to bring it to the field. You know, I had a chance to talk to John Wildhack, the athletic director at Syracuse, before the game today. And, and I, I don't want this to be left unsaid. He is super proud, and there's a long way to go, of the way his team his football team has handled this coronavirus, paid attention to all the instructions, stayed to the task at hand. I think he said they haven't had anybody since June test positive on their football team, very few on campus. Um, and I, I could see what he was telling me about it because nice throw and catch. Incomplete, bobbled out of bounds. But uh, you could see how proud he was of, of his football team and his student athletes and his coaches for doing all they can to make sure they can get here today. And you can echo that across the country that's playing. The, the teams that were able to get to game one took a momentous effort 
and a commitment both financially by these right. athletic departments but also by these players completely upending the, the way of life that college students know and sequestering themselves to take care of, of what they have to do to stay clean from from COVID-19 so uh, John Wildhack is absolutely right you have to be impressed with the way these young people have responded to this Third down coming up here for Syracuse. They have struggled on third downs today. Four of 18. And that one is picked off. Culpepper's pass is picked off. Giovanni Biggers. And his teammates are loving it. Time to get these guys in, playing a little extra. Here you have an opportunity to get an interception. You better celebrate it. And Cole Pepper throws that one behind his receiver. Biggers picks it off. And then celebrate. Bring that energy. Come on. The crowd's not going to cheer for you. His teammates each other. are jumping all over him on the sidelines. That was awesome. Finally letting him catch his breath. But oh, there it is. The belt. Bring out the championship belt for the turnovers. That's a pretty sweet one. Like, I, I don't, I'm not a big turnover prop fan. I think we should have stuck with the original and probably left it there. Yeah. But I, I like the, I like the championship belt. Jay Schroeder still in quarterback for North Carolina. And there it is. They're showing, they're showing the fans. They're showing us. Showing the fans. Hey, some habits I are. I mean, where are you gonna go? You know, show each other. You gotta. You go to the stands. You put it up. It's muscle memory. I like it. Celebrate y'all like you always would. EJ Jones in it, running back, and he'll have the carry here. And nothing working. You know, we we're talking about the COVID-19 and everything that the, these teams have to go through, their protocols, and, and this is what they deal with, to just to be able to come out here and play four quarters of football. And Syracuse got here last night, got off the plane, the charter flight, got on a bus, went to the hotel, everybody got tested in the big room. They found out overnight and even into the morning to make sure everybody was um, clean of the coronavirus, tested negative. Um, and this is how it's going to be, man. New yeah. world. It, it, is, it is a new world. As Jacoby Criswell, the heralded four-star true freshman quarterback, comes in. And look, on that on that graphic, we had that they get tested three times per week. We were told yesterday, when they, these teams got tested yesterday, they took a test and a backup test. I count that as two tests. Yeah. You got tested four times this week at a minimum. So, uh, I, again, it's the commitment by the schools, by these student athletes to, to want to play. Well, I hope Virginia Tech can wrap their arms around their issue and, and, and get it back. They've uh, had a tough go of it here. Of course, their game next week with Virginia has been canceled or postponed, I should say. And they've adjusted the schedule for Virginia. They've moved one game in November all, all the way up until September. And so there's just going to be fluid throughout the year. And, you know, the, even the championship game is a fluid situation. It's scheduled for either the December 12th or the 19th. And you wonder what Virginia Tech situation will do to impact that date. Uh, you would guess if you're going to play that Virginia Virginia Tech game, then, then it slides the championship game back to the 19th. Yeah. You tack that on at the end of the year. The excitement that these fan bases have developed for kicking off the first game of the year and now has to go away. But uh, uh, this is this has been a great job by North Carolina today of, of on opening day, going through the sloppiness, figuring it out, and getting a win. Yeah. North Carolina's offense started getting it humming there in the second half and looked like the offense we thought. Syracuse ran out of gas. I thought their first half game plan, their first half effort was sensational. Kept them in there. If their offense could have made a few plays, this could have been a whole different dynamic here in the second half. But North Carolina just too many weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Sam Howell finishes 25 at 34, 295. And North Carolina with 450 yards of offense. They hold the Qs to 202. So Matt Brown and Dino Babers just wave. No more handshakes at midfield. 
And we've got a game in the books. Hallelujah. <laughs> we made it. 60 minutes. <laughs> and just this has been an awesome experience. Without fans, still great to have college football. It was. Great to work with you, Roddy. Great to step in for my friend Wes Durham. We'll be back on the ACC Network in the coming weeks. But North Carolina wins it here 31-6 over Syracuse here from Keenan Stadium. Now, now